We've had some questions over time regarding the process for making these movies. I'll jump right into it by describing the cameras that we have on board. I used to film everything with my iPhone 5 and that was pretty good. And for any of the wet weather things, I uh, used to use the GoPro Hero 3 Plus. Now we've been filming with the GoPro Hero 5 Black for several months. It was the easiest uh, camera to acquire at the time. The touch screen is a little bit finicky and sometimes I have problems um, having the SD card in there functioning properly. I have to reformat the card often in order to get the camera to record anything. But other than that, it's been a good investment because it gets dropped often. It's always wet. It's always going in the salt water. It's waterproof up to 10 meters or 33 feet and so far there hasn't been any trouble with that. One of our generous viewers has in fact sent us another GoPro 5 and we'll be going to pick that up soon. So look out for even more good quality shots uh, with the 5. It's also better than the uh, GoPro Hero 3 Plus in regards to sound. I get quite good sound with this camera, but nothing quite as good as the sound on my Fairweather cameras. I call it fair weather equipment because I don't generally bring this camera out into anything very messy. A Canon EOS M series camera. This is a mirrorless type camera which means that you get something in between the quality of a DS, a big heavy duty DSLR camera and a point and shoot camera. The nice thing and the reason why I went for a mirrorless camera is that I have the option of being able to change the lens. The biggest downfall of this camera has been the autofocus. I've seen a lot of other users complaining that it's slow, which is okay because I like to manually adjust my focus on the camera anyway. I'm hoping in the future to pimp out my Canon, maybe get some proper microphones, but for now I have a super duper uh, low cost wind noise reducer on the microphone of this camera by using an elastic and a scrap piece of foam tied over top. I'd just like to say that there isn't a particular reason that I have the Canon cameras or have had many cameras that are Canons in the past. Other than that, I started out with them, I'm used to them. When I'm shooting I can use the camera more quickly because I'm more comfortable with it. There are many brands out there who also offer mirrorless cameras of the same kind of quality and they might be cheaper, they might be more expensive. In this case I went for it because I'm used to it. Also uh, being mid-range allows a person like Robbie who doesn't have as much experience with the camera to put on the automatic settings and get good quality shots that don't require a lot of tinkering in the options. In the future I'd like to upgrade my lenses maybe pick up a telephoto lens that would allow for shooting, a telephoto lens being a nice and long lens for being able to shoot wildlife that might be too far for these current lenses to pick up. And I'd also like to pick up a lens for being able to shoot in more low light. Hooked them in the side. Yep, they've been hitting it quite like it's a hook game. We like to play a bit of an anchor chain game to practice our diving apnea. Of course, Robbie wins every time. We stopped at Caleta San Juanico on the way to Bahia Concepcion. The water was slowly becoming more murky, but the sea creatures were still about. Apple 
MacBook Air 11 inch has small capacity and it's pretty low power but that also means that it's not so power hungry which is great on the boat. It comes with free music and movie making software. iMovie is the most basic and simple movie making program out there in my opinion. I have used a lot of other editing programs going through art school such as the Adobe programs for editing movies and Final Cut Pro, but I don't currently have those on the computer. But as you can see, I can make the movies with iMovie and get them to you. There was supposedly a cruiser's shrine somewhere nearby on shore, but we didn't even end up walking on shore here. We only felt the need to spend some time in the water and catch some food. So good to finally get some wind around here. We arrived in the afternoon from Calete San Juanico to San Sebastian. This place emphasized for us the need to come into harbors only during the day. Looking at three separate charts, we knew that we couldn't rely on the accuracy of them anymore. We needed to look at the water and trust our eyes, and the depth sounder, and not the chart plotter. We had downloaded some cooking channels on YouTube in Loreto and settled down for the evening. It's tough and chewy. Before leaving San Francisco, we had welded an extra rim to the stovetop. This meant that we had to downsize our frying pan. We still make our favorite morning meal, just the mini crepe version now. I'm of course a big fan of free software on the computer, so I use GIMP, which is kind of like a Photoshop-esque type program, which is open source and free online. It allows me to animate those little maps that you see in the videos, and it allows me to make any sort of drawings or graphics.
At Punta Concepcion, we said hello to another sea turtle and clipped the GoPro to the spear gun again. It makes aiming a little harder, but we didn't need to worry or go hungry. We both managed to get some food. Okay, we got the rock with the light, and then we got Isla Blanca, Isla Ramon, Libre, very easy to see with the color. Again, the electronic charts making no sense. However, we made a logical deduction about where we were. It's a nice looking bird. And you can't. On shore, a local gringo saw us wandering aimlessly through the town that would be dormant until October. He helped us out immensely by driving us to the only open tienda in the area for ice. Are these boats here all year round or? Pardon? Yeah. Two boats that are here, are they always anchored here? Or? Yeah. Looks a lot like a Sardinia in Italy. At Isla Coyote, we found a puffer fish that was about my size. And we also had the island mostly to ourselves for the day, with its beautiful little anchorage. That applause for such a good job I'm doing here. It's like, it's like a southeasterly swell coming in, about 10 knots of wind. I think almost six knots here. Coastline ahead, an island on the right over there. Still unsure whether we're gonna spend the night there or not. I don't know if I want to spend a night out here when we've been seeing thunder, well, we've been seeing lightning on the horizon. I think there's storms threatening to come through every night, pretty much. I think that's just the, the time of the year it is. As long as we're seeing the, that lightning on the horizon, like it can blow towards us or miss us, like it missed us a couple of evenings. What do you think? Well, I think that uh, Justin uh, got a little paranoid. <laughs> no, just joking, she's probably right. Uh, like, I want to generally go to where fishing is good, but she generally wants to go where she can sleep well, and I think she's the wisest of the both of us. But that definitely looks like an excellent fishing spot, so... <laughs> I don't know, I think we're gonna hit it. We'll see. Either we stay there, or we stay on the next big island, where we are... There should be shelter from... Isla San Marcos. Isla San Marcos, where they should be sheltered from the north and the east, even though the last thunderstorm came from the west, so you can't really, it's like Russian roulette. So what we have here are Thai fish chips. It's a recipe that's generally very good for fish that is very dark, like barilote, which most people throw away. Lots of soya sauce, two tablespoons of sugar, some chili sauce, that's of either garlic powder or minced garlic. And the trick is, is you dry them one side and then you turn them around and dry them the other side. And when they're nice and dry, you deep fry them for a couple of minutes. 
and you get this crunchy beef jerky imitation. This is the way. Not much wind, little floppity flop. At Isla San Marcos, just before Santa Rosalia on the Baja Peninsula, we anchored at the gypsum mine after a full day of pleasant wind. They don't splatter because they, they're pretty dry. It's like, it's like pouring dry. There's almost no liquid in there. That's the whole point. We'd like to give a shout out to all those who have donated materials and technologies to our voyage. That includes all the physical cruising guides and paper charts that have been donated to us as well. Thank you everybody, thank you for watching, and thank you for your support. Like and subscribe to our videos because that encourages us to make more. Become a patron or leave a tip through PayPal.